Hello, and welcome to the Hawkridge Systems video series for SOLIDWORKS Composer. This is the top five things you need to know. This is video four covering the properties menu. Uh, if we look down here at the bottom left, this is the default location of the properties menu. And it's very important to note that in Composer, everything is controlled by properties. Uh, literally, if you don't uh, live in this properties pane, it's very hard to work within Composer. So uh, the best thing to do to learn the properties pane is just to click on something and then go through the properties for that element. For instance, I have an annotation, a note that's just applied to the shell of this model. And if I select it, you'll see in the properties, it populates all the properties for that particular selection. If I click on the background, it's going to be environmental properties. If I click on a part, it's going to be properties of just that part and so on. Here's a 2D image that's been placed in there, and these are all the properties for that 2D image. So that said, if I click on the annotation, I look in here and I say, okay, what are my options? So you'll see that this is a tooltip, and tooltip's calling out a property. If I want the tooltip to call out a string, I can say, I can make this say whatever I want. Um, this is text, I don't know, something like that. And then when I mouse over that uh, part, uh, or that uh, annotation, I'll get that tooltip. Um, looks like it's just not working. It's probably because we're not in the player. So uh, if I were to open this in the composer player, then I'd get that string right there. This is this is text when you mouse over this uh, this text here. Okay, then we have properties such as opacity, so I can make that text uh, more transparent or less transparent. The stay on top feature is so if we have models over that property, it will always be on top. If I were to trigger trigger that off then it will go behind uh, the model as if, you know, it was in 3D space. And it is. It's a 2D element in 3D space. Let's go ahead and turn, turn that back to stay on top. Uh, if we go down the list here, we'll see that we have different fonts we can choose from, different size of this annotation, and uh, particularly what it's pointing to. So right now it's pointing to the, um, oh, right here, parent level. So right now it's pointing to the shell of this RC car, but I could tell it to point to the chassis. I could have a point to uh, all the way up to the root level here, and we'll have a call out the actor name of that. So we'll say that we want to point to the chassis, and there we go. So we can have the annotation point to the part that we're connecting it to, or anything above that in the uh, assembly tree. All right, and uh, if I click on a component such as this pin right here, this, this screw, we'll see that the screw uh, has been translated out from the part of the car. If I were to go, uh, just like we did in video, I believe video one and two, we we'll go to author, path, create associated path from neutral, it'll snap a path from this part to that part. Now this one, the properties comes into play. You click on that line, properties update saying how do you want this line to look we can do uh, start and end entities um, of or extremities of this line if we want to add arrows and stuff like that we have the color of the line you know we can choose whatever you want the type of dots um, again that stay on top but really what we want to do here is we want to base this on the world axis so it's following that axis uh, and then we can choose how it's actually bending and how it's actually following that there. So something like that, and we can create an exploded line that goes from that pin to where it came from. All right, uh, next thing I'd like to show is the ability to take an image or insert an image. And this is, I inserted this just by going to author image 2D. The trick here is to drag the 2D image anywhere you want, and it doesn't have to have the same aspect ratio of the image you're going to be referencing. With that selected, so if I were to like select this guy, and I go to texture map path in the properties here, so map the path, click the three dots, I can choose a different image. Uh, when I choose that image, it's going to skew that image. The trick here is you click on the image, hold down shift, select the corner, and it will automatically scale to the size or the aspect ratio of that image. With that image selected in the properties, I could do attachments such as the arc tooltip or gradient or one of these real cool composer style um, 
attachments. And what do we have here? It looks like uh, <clears throat> probably the gears on the back of this guy here. So something like that. We'll take the width of this, make it a little bit bigger. We'll make it like red. That way it stands out to let you know, hey, this is an actual photo of what's going on here. So a lot of times we don't actually model everything in the assembly, like sometimes, you know, wiring harnesses or little things that just don't matter, uh, glue, stuff like that. Well, if you take a picture of that or photo, you bring that back into Composer, point it to where it needs to go. Again, a picture tells a thousand words. You don't have to add text or anything like that. It says, hey, this is what we're talking about. And uh, that's just utilizing the properties to, again, emphasize what exactly we're doing. In the author tab for like a circle, if I wanted to bring the user's attention to, hey, something's going on here, I have some options in the circle as well. And it's just like with anything else, we got opacity, our coloring, and uh, you know our widths and stuff like that to really just make it stand out. So it's like, hey, bring the user's attention here. There's something going on and we wanna check it out. Okay, so that really in a nutshell is the properties uh, menu. Um, uh, well, let's do one more. Uh, if I click on the, the shell here, and if I say uh, that this environmental type is like um, Chrome, we see that we lose all our decals. Kind of want to throw that out. So the reason why this shell had decals is because it was a split face in SOLIDWORKS and the different faces were colored. Now in Composer, if we use like uh, different environmental effects such as like plastic or metal, it will apply a metal uh, look to it kind of uh, shininess and stuff, or the plastic shininess, you know, keep those elements. If we change it to something like aluminum or uh, chrome or something like that, we lose those because uh, it's composers now overriding that, those, those uh, textures. So just something to keep in mind. If you click on something and it totally changes, that's what's happening. You might want to switch to like a, uh, a metal or a, a plastic or something of that nature. Uh, or if you want to do something like this, then, you know, we can apply the metal and, and we're done. Okay, so that is the properties menu. And the, uh, the next video in this series is going to go over publications. And uh, that will wrap up this five-part video series. Thanks for watching.